Hello, and in today's video, we are going to be looking at how we could start to introduce teaching balances in our yoga for cancer classes. Now, I like working with balances, and they might not be the first thing that comes to mind when working with yoga for cancer, but there's a lot of benefits there. I find, first of all, on a mental level, there's a lot of focus and concentration, and it really brings people into the present moment. It's hard to think about the future and the past and worries whilst you're balancing, so that's a really lovely effect. Secondly, it's a nice way to start activating and connecting people to their core. So we need to have the core engaged to be able to balance. And thirdly, it can be really good for improving bone density as well. So when we're, you know, load bearing and taking the whole body weight just into one leg, um, then we're putting that kind of gentle stress on the bones that encourage the laying down of new materials. There's lots of um, there's lots of benefits from including balances in your class. So balancing can be really challenging for people who are going through cancer treatment or recently been through cancer treatment. It can be fatigue. Um, some of the medication may make people feel dizzy. There may be peripheral neuropathy. So these are all things to keep in mind. So when thinking about teaching a group and we want to be inclusive, quite often like to start with Tadasana. And this isn't classically a balance, but I think we need to be really balanced and aligned on two feet first before we then start trying to take the weight into one leg. So I always encourage people to come into a really good Tadasana and just feel the weight through their feet. Start making that connection between the balls and the heels and finding that balance on two feet. Great. Connecting with the breath and letting go of any unnecessary tension. So the more aligned with gravity we are, the easier it is to hold our posture. There's less effort. And then from here, just connecting with the toes. So lifting and spreading the toes, coming down. Doing this a few times. And again, this may not be straightforward for everybody, but it's a nice thing to practice. Good. So we've got that nice broad connection with the floor. And then the first balance we can do actually stays on two feet. And it's just simply inhaling, coming up onto your tiptoes and exhaling, coming down. So it can be a nice way just to start engaging with those muscles that are gonna support us when we're balancing and having the security of being on two feet. And if for any reason somebody cannot stand on one leg or is ill-advised, then this can be a nice alternative to offer them. So from here, we're going to move into tree pose. So let's bring ankles and knees together. Let's bring the hands together. And we're going to connect with that center line. So taking a breath in. And as we exhale, we gently squeeze the hands together, squeeze the legs together, squeeze the glutes, gently draw the lower belly in. So this isn't to your maximum strength, I'd say probably no more than half your maximum. And we relax as you breathe in. So we exhale, squeeze to the center line, that sense of drawing in. Relax as you breathe in. And once more. Great. So let's start by raising the right foot. So the first thing we're going to do is really press that left foot into the floor as though you're trying to push through the floor. Gonna soften the right knee, 
Turning out as far as the hip allows. So some people might have their knee facing forwards, it's fine. Let the heel rest just above the ankle. And we keep focusing on pressing this foot into the ground. So there's a rootedness, gently drawing the belly in, gentle press of the hands. And then there may come a point where you feel that the toes can just float off. So for some people, we can stay here and the toes are very close to catch their balance if they feel wobbly. For people who feel steady here, there's two options. If the hip is quite restricted, you could bring the toes onto the other foot. Or if the hip is a bit more open, we can bring that onto the calf muscle. And again, pressing that foot down to get length. Just doing a few checks through the body in terms of releasing any tension we don't need. And then we can inhale, take the hands up and open our branches. Take one more breath. And then just release the hands, stepping down, shaking out. And coming on to the other side. So recentering the feet, bringing the hands together. Let's have one more squeeze. As we exhale, just reconnecting that center line. Release as you breathe in. And then pressing your right foot down. So push into the floor, lengthen up to the sky. Soften the left knee and just let the heel rest above the ankle. So pressing down, taking the weight more and more into that right leg until you feel that the toes can just naturally float up. And again, there's the option to bring the toes onto the foot or you can bring the foot onto the calf muscle. And in terms of the hands, classically, we rest the thumb on the breastbone. For some people, that's going to be uncomfortable. They can hold the hands slightly in front of the body so we have space and comfort here. So there's always options. Good. And just reminding people they can come down at any time they feel they need to. Just keeping the eyes focused, face relaxed. And a little challenge, breathing in, take the hands up and open out the branches as we exhale. Take one more breath and then exhaling, releasing the wrists all the way down, Good. And then letting the feet come to about shoulder width apart and just easing out with a few hip circles. And coming back in the opposite direction. There we go. So that's a really sort of safe and inclusive way that you can bring balance into your yoga for cancer classes, or you may be teaching a blended class. Um, so do feel free to send me some comments. Let me know how you get on with that. And we'll see you next time.